Hello and welcome to Intuitive Nature, the podcast. My name is Susan Jane and I believe that trusting your intuition is the best way to live your life with meaning and purpose. Each week you will hear about how you can connect, develop and trust your intuition through meditations, readings and my own personal experiences. Join me to understand how your intuition can guide you towards a life full of meaning and loving purpose. Hello and welcome to Intuitive Nature, the podcast. I'm Susan Jane, the Intuitist, and I'll be your host for this Intuition and Spirituality series. In the last episode, 1.16, We went through, or we went into more detail about how our intuition connects with us. Now, it was through the use of tools such as Ouija boards, pendulums, and dowsing. So this week, we asked the question, can intuition predict or tell the future? Now, to get a better understanding of this, we must first revisit what intuition is in order to know if it can predict the future. So we have two bodies. We have our physical human body, the physical side that we can see, and we have a spiritual ethereal being, which is a body of energy. Now, the spirit body comes into the physical body while the physical body is still in vitro, so in the womb. So when we have this human body coming through, and the spiritual being attaches to it, we then create a human being. That is the blend of two. Now, when we look into it a little bit deeper, we find out that the spirit has to come into a physical body in order to learn a particular thing. I'm not sure what that is, and everybody's different, but we all have a learning to do, and that's like our purpose in life. That's what that deep sense of achievement and and needing to achieve our purpose in life or be on the right path. But the background of the human body is that it's physical. We come through lots of DNA, so we have all these past generations that have come through uh, through that physical DNA. So there's a lot of elements there that we bring forward from each generation that comes through. The physical body obviously has the time restrictions. We're only on this earth for a certain amount of time. Time is also lineal for the physical body. It starts at one point and ends at the other. It's very lineal. If you're living in the now, you can't be living in the past or living in the future. You are here in the now. That's part of the physical human body. The physical human body also has the five senses. So we sight, sound, touch, um, (laughs) <laughs> forgotten them all. <laughs> uh, sorry, off on a different tangent. So the physical body also has the five physical senses, which is sound, sight, smell, taste, and touch. That's better. <laughs> we are a human being. We actually like to hang around with certain people. So we still come through those elements of being and wanting to be with different people. Now, the background of the spiritual being is that they've come into many bodies, different bodies, many different times. So although we have, as as a physical human, we have a lot of lineal um, background as far as our ancestors go. So we have a lot of that coming forward, a lot of that understanding coming forward. As a spiritual being, we have been in many bodies before. So We could have been in a male body or another female body. We could have been in lots of different types of bodies in lots of different cultures. And this is where we understand and gather our learning. This is where we get that knowledge and that knowing from because we have experienced so much. Of course, coming back into a physical body at a young age or as a baby, um, there is still a lot of learning to go through. So the spiritual being comes in many times, it's not lineal. It doesn't have a time frame lineal. So a spirit has no understanding of, I shouldn't say understanding, but they don't have a past, present or future. 
they're here now and they have access to the past and they have access to the future and it's not so much access they're living it it's there it's it and and don't ask me how but that's what it's all about they also spirit likes to hang around with certain spirit as well they won't hang around with negative energies they will hang around with energies that more resonate with them more similar to a physical human they will hang around with people that they resonate with now with spiritual being um, I'm not a, an expert on that. I, I love talking about intuition and that's how, that's where my expertise lies. But I, pers- I firmly believe that there is different levels in the spirit. So when we're doing a learning, when we're getting that understanding and we're, we're coming into a physical body to get a learning or to get an understanding, I strongly believe that we have different levels of spiritual beings and, and we hear about the different spiritual beings. We hear about um, the higher realms of spiritual beings, the archangels, uh, different things like that. And then we have the lower realms, which is more towards the negative energies. So there is different levels or different realms. Um, and I believe that we actually just grow through them. We go through them and grow through them. Very similar to what we do in the short frame of time that we have as a physical body, we still do the similar in a spiritual body. But if you could imagine that our years as a physical body could be equivalent to our lifetimes as a spirit being in a physical body. But anyway, I'm going off tangent here, but that's just, that's my belief. That's my thoughts to it. So what is intuition then? So intuition is the communication from our spirit being to our physical body. And it's communicating in order to create some type of action. Now, the action can be muscle movement, can be physical. It could be thought. It could be emotion. It could be uh, wanting you to sort of take that turn off instead of that turn off when you're driving somewhere. It's all these little messages that we start to get that is our spirit communicating with us. Now, they're doing that because... Again, they've got an agenda. The spirit in us has an agenda. It has a purpose. And that's what it is trying to achieve. It's trying to achieve this purpose. And I honestly believe that when we have ghosts around us, a spirit around us, there's always spirit there. But when we have like one that is being a little bit awkward, it is because they don't feel that they achieved their agenda before their body passed. That's, and again, that's just my personal opinion. So if somebody has died a bit quicker or has been a sudden death and they don't feel like they'd have achieved their agenda, they may be hanging around a little bit longer and they've just got a different type of energy to other spirits. So when you're talking to a clairvoyant or a channeler or someone like that, their energy level is very different to say a spirit or a ghost so it's again a different level that they're conversing with communicating with your spirit will attract other spirits that it it can either help pass over or that uh, resonate with them that are like-minded that resonate with them so when we talk about our spirit guides that's what they are They're, they're, they're other spirits that like hanging around your spirit and they'll be giving you information and giving you guidance as you are going through this life and helping you possibly get onto your life purpose. I've gone astray again. (laughs) So when we receive our intuitive messages, we can receive them physically, mentally, emotionally, or visually. And this is done in many ways, such as a mental thought. So if it's mental intuition, it's a mental thought, or you're thinking something, or you, you imagine something. Because a lot of the times, we can't imagine something unless it's actually put into our mind and it's that, that spirit being that gives you that understanding of it and it gives you that mental thought that sort of goes with it and you think, oh, okay, well, I could do that or maybe I'll do this or sometimes they're so strong they can be an instantaneous reaction that you are not aware of. You just, you just do it. You don't even think about it. It's just done. So some of those thoughts can come that way. We can get them as visual impressions. So visual impressions could be dreams, could be those um, visual images that we see. 
different things like that. And, you know, sometimes where you sort of see something at the corner of your eye, that might be the visual impression that the um, intuition is trying to get you, your spirit's trying to get you to look that way. It could be an emotional expression. So it's when something triggers an emotion in you that um, that can be what your spirit is trying to communicate to you, how, how to respond to it, or this is you're getting a negative response, so let's have a look at how we can respond differently to it. So it's a, you know that's sort of a mechanism. Or it could be a physical feeling, like we get the butterflies in the stomach, or I can remember when I needed to do, uh, when I was working as a healer, um, my hands would go very blotchy. And as soon as they would go blotchy, I knew somebody needed a healing. So I saw this physical sign on my hands that um, said somebody needed a healing around me. And sure enough, there's always somebody that was wanting a healing. If intuition is the communication from our spirit to our physical body, then can it actually predict the future? Can it help us in that aspect? So I just want to tell you about this little story of mine. This sort of blew me away a little bit more than uh, I probably (laughs) care to imagine, actually. I was working at this stage. I was working in a pharmacy. It was Christmas Eve, and I was only working with the pharmacist who happened to be a lady, about half my age probably. She was interested in uh, card reading and, and in the spiritual world and spiritual aspect, but she, of course, she had a very analytical brain and a very analytical way of looking at things because of her um, degree as a pharmacist. But it was really fun. It was really quiet. It was after hours, Christmas Eve. We the pharmacy stayed open a little bit later. And there was no one around. It, the, the whole place was, was just quiet. There was nothing around. And she came to me and she said, so, Susan, what are you going to be doing this time next year, 12 months' time? It was really strange. It wasn't a question that anyone had asked me before, and I sort of had to have a bit of a think about it. But for some reason, this response started to well up inside me, and it was a response that I would normally with with most of my intuitive work, I d- didn't share a lot. I, I have to be honest, I, I didn't share a lot. This is really the first time I've started really sharing. So when this lady asked me, I my, my initial response is, oh, don't say anything. But I felt compelled to say something. And so I did. I started talking. And I said to her, I'm not really sure what I'm doing. I said, but I think I'm going to be overseas helping people in a in a care type situation where I'm supporting people and helping people and she said oh that sounds interesting tell me more and as I've gone into it a bit further it started to come out as a bit of a almost like a dream but you got more and more involved in it the more you thought about it the more things came up, the more stuff came up and the clearer it started to become. And I went, hang on, I I am helping. I said, I I can see that there's lots of palm trees. So it's it's tropical and it's like an island. I said, I I feel like I'm going to be helping people on, on an island somewhere. And she goes, okay. And she could... I don't know whether she could sense anything or not, but she kept on, she kept on going. And what else? She said, what else can you see? Then it all started to come flooding through. And I went, hang on, I'm not, I'm not physically helping people. I'm flying over this island and I'm sending my love and my thoughts to the people down below. I said, it's, it's, it's beautiful. I, I believe it's an island because it looks so tropical. It looks looks like what you'd expect a tropical island to look like. I said the palm trees and but the houses aren't big flash houses. They're more they're they're a more of a environment, so not not as uh, built up as say you would expect um, other places. But you know, like holiday destinations. But this wasn't. This was this was lower down. This was more of a country feel to it but tropical country said it was it was really weird and the longer I sort of went with it the more she asked and I said 
I'm, she said, why are you helping them? And I said, because there's water everywhere. I said, there's just water everywhere. And it's flooded, but it's not flooding. I said, and then it's, it, there's not been a storm. There's, the tops of the trees aren't damaged, but there's water everywhere. And I had no idea what it was. I had no idea what I was looking at. But I could see the devastation. Without devastation, there was only devastation down low. It wasn't like a tornado where the whole world's gone, you know, like everything goes. Or it wasn't like a cyclone where you see everything wiped down. I said, but there's water everywhere. And it was by the beach. It was like an island. That's why I knew it was an island. It was by the beach. So it couldn't have been flood. It's because it doesn't flood necessarily at the beach. And I sort of talked a little bit more and I sort of went to her, no, I don't actually think I'm going to be there. I think I'm, I'm just flying over it. And when I said I'm just flying over it, I thought to myself, oh, that's just, that's just silly. And I closed down. Anyway, I thought very little of it after that. It was the next day was Christmas Day, so I didn't worry about it. And the whole year went by until 12 months after I had spoken about it. And 12 months after I'd spoken about it, it was Christmas Eve, the Boxing Day, two days later, so 12 months and two days later, was when the tsunami hit. Now, I had never heard of a tsunami. I didn't even know what a tsunami was. So I had no idea what was going on or what it was. She phoned me up early that morning and said, have you heard the news? And I went, um, no, no, I haven't heard the news, <laughs> not that I know of. And she said, a tsunami's hit. And so I put on the TV and I looked at, she said, that's what you were talking about. And I went, well, I don't know what a tsunami is. And she said, it was like a tidal wave. And she said, but it's not a tidal wave. Because I remember saying, it's not a tidal wave. It wasn't a tidal wave. It wasn't a tall amount of water, but there was water everywhere. <laughs> it was really strange. I jumped on the TV, I had a look, and some of the images that were showing were exactly what I had been seeing 12 months prior. They were going over and looking at the devastation. And when you looked at it, the tops of the trees were fine because they hadn't been touched, but there was devastation underneath. So what I'd actually done, I had seen this tsunami, what, what had happened, you know, 12 months before it actually happened. Now, again, I had no idea what I was talking about, had no idea what it was, had no idea to even sort of say anything. The fact is I, I was speaking to this lady who was a pharmacist and, yeah, she was the, sort of the only one and she was just blown away. Well, of course, I was blown away too because I had no idea what I was doing. When I look at things like that, if I hadn't have kept on going with that feeling, if I hadn't have tuned in and sort of kept on speaking, I wouldn't have seen it so clearly because I can remember it unraveling as I, as I spoke about it. As these thoughts and this information came to me, I can remember talking about it. Um, it meant nothing. It absolutely meant nothing to me. I'm not going to sit there and say, oh, guess what, I can predict the future because there's no bloody way I can do that. But this was a little bit out of this world. <laughs> it blew me away a little bit. So if we can predict the future, it's more about it. Okay, so spirit has access to the future and the past and everything else. Um, and my intuition was actually bringing forward this information from the future, what was going to happen in the future. Why I tuned into that, I have no idea. Don't understand any of that, but I did. And it happened again not long after it, and I believe this was about 9-11. But what I saw was, what it looked like was, it for me, it was like an aeroplane that had exploded and there was people going past still in their, strapped into their chairs, in their aeroplane chairs going past. So that was all a bit weird. But again, you see these things and you don't have any understanding to them. Nostradamus did the same. He would see these things and just write them down because you, you don't have an understanding to them. But this information was coming to me and it was coming to me so clearly and so easily that it was 
easy for me to talk about. I had no idea again. I had no attachment to it. I wasn't trying. But how we interpret the messages is the understanding of whether we are receiving. It's not, not, not so much whether we are receiving predictions or the future. It's whether we understand that that's what we're receiving. So if somebody said to you, so what are you going to be doing in the, you know, in 12 months time? You've got a time frame to go by. I think that's what part sparked this. I had a time frame to go by. And so I could bring that forward. But if I was just to predict the future, I, I, I couldn't. I don't, I can't do that. I don't know how to do that. My intuition probably can, but I don't know how to interpret those signs to do that. And that's where I go back to. It's not so much that your intuition could predict the future or anything like that or take you back into the past. It's more about how you interpret the signs. And intuition is all about that all the way through everything. It is how we interpret the signs, the mental thoughts, the visual impressions, the emotional expressions, the physical feelings. It's all about how we interpret those. It's not necessarily about the actual sign itself. So when we look at if it can predict the future, sure, <laughs> it, it can. I, I have proof that it can. Can I do that whenever I want to? Uh, I haven't tried and I don't know whether I can or not. It's not something I want to do. I don't want to sit there and predict my future. I want to enjoy my now because that's what I really, really have got. I want to understand where I'm going in the future. I want to get an understanding of that. But I can do that on my own. I can do that by doing creative visualization and getting my own future together. If I were to sit here in the now and wallow in self pity and um, negativity, that's what I'm going to get in the future. It's not until I step out of that that I will find the future that I want. So intuition can help you. And also, when we're connecting with our intuition, if you can imagine our spirit is talking to other spirits, so we're getting that information coming through as well. So yes, we have the ability to do all of that. It's whether you choose to and it's whether and it's how you interpret that message. Trying to predict the future. I don't I really don't want to do that. That's not my cup of tea. But then um we're all here for different reasons as well. So we'll have people that can do that predict the future and things like that and and it's terrific I, I just think it's brilliant but it's not it's not for me if you want to hone your skills and get your spirit to do that and communicate to you through your intuition so you get those understandings properly you interpret those messages properly it's a matter of practice intuition understanding interpreting like when you're learning a new language you have no idea. Say you wanted to learn Spanish, although you might have already talked Spanish, but so you have no idea, you want to learn a new language. When you practice it, you will get better at it and you start to understand and you start to watch the body language. So you're seeing those signs, you start to understand the words, the little phrases that come in, you know what they mean. You start to put sentences together. It's exactly the same with your intuition. You may have a mental thought, but you also get a physical feeling with it or an emotion that comes through at the same time. So it all starts to make sense to you. You practice that, then you'll be able to predict the future. If you want to, if that's what you want to do, talk to spirit around you, if that's what you want to do. So once you've connected with that intuition and you understand and you can interpret those signs and, and, and signals, then you have the ability to go a lot bigger and a lot further if that's where you want to go. So that's my story. The conclusion is you can predict the future if you want to through your intuition, but you need to learn to interpret those signs and those messages properly. And that takes practice. So yeah, you can, you can do that. Um, if you want any more tips or tools for trusting your intuition, just subscribe to the podcast or follow me on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. Or jump onto the website, that is www.intuitivenature.com.au and I've got some blogs and free resources there. So remember, we are all naturally intuitive. It is part of human nature. It is our intuitive nature. And I thank you for listening. I'm Susan Jane, the intuitist of intuitive nature. 
saying, bye for now.